I'm proud to welcome Alex, who is going to share her advice on the importance of putting your best foot forward, presenting yourself professionally and making the most of your opportunity to make a great first impression. Alex is a USQ alumnus and primary school teacher who used her passion for fashion as the inspiration for her blog, What the Teacher Wears. With a motto of who says you can't be fabulous between nine and five, Alex has developed a large and loyal social media following, interested in her advice about creating a stylish yet work appropriate wardrobe. Okay, so I'm going to hand over to Alex now and please remember to post your questions in the Q&A function. Thank you. There we go. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining in. Thanks, Andrea, too, for the awesome introduction. You need to come with me everywhere I go, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so all of you joining in tonight, um, tonight our webinar is all about first impressions. Now, obviously, too, I am a teacher. I studied my Bachelor of Education at USQ, but this tonight is not just about teaching. All of these tips are things that you can pretty much take into any workforce workplace so just don't think just because i um, teaching my background that that's where it stays you can definitely take it anywhere that you go okay so first off so first impressions now I really like this kind of short sharp sweet sentence that really just kind of sums up everything that's important about a first impression because your first impressions you've got seven seconds and that's all you have to make a first impression and really to make it count so with that being said, when you have that first impression, you've kind of got to ace it then and there because unfortunately you can't go back on a first impression. You know, once you've made it with someone and it's, if, even if it's someone you know, or you don't know, you know, that's kind of it. And that's what they're going to have long term of you in their memory as well. So you really have to make sure that you make your first impression count for all of the right reasons. So tonight through the webinar as well, we're going to talk about how you can nail that first impression and going a bit beyond to then just the wardrobe because a lot of people think, you know, it is the wardrobe that's the um, kind of it and everything. It is a major element. It is a major player in making your first impression and making a really good one, but it does go a little bit further than that as well. So tonight through the webinar, we'll be talking about tips on what you can wear to your first impression, how to nail your first impression. Um, also talking about too about body language and your attitude and things like that as well. So yeah, so just more than the outfit. Okay, so moving on to a bit more about first impressions. I'm gonna move that out of the way. So we all know that it is what's on the inside that really matters, okay? But the person you are meeting is not basing their first impression of you off that. So that's where it does come, you know, on, on the outside. So that first time that person is seeing you, they are going to be basing their first impression of you off what you're wearing, you know, your body language. Are you standing with arms open? Are your arms crossed? You know, how's your posture? Are you standing with a straight back? Are you a little bit hunched over? You know, then they'll go to your hair. What's your hair like? Is it brushed? Is it not? Um, even too, if you are talking to them as well, you know, it might even come down to what does your breath smell like? And these are all little things that they will remember in that first seven seconds as well. And then also too, going through to the handshake as well. You know, do you have a strong handshake? Do you not have a strong handshake? Um, you know, did you go in for a handshake as well? So there's a lot of things that you do need to remember when you are making that first impression. But that's okay because, you know, listen to the web to webinar tonight and then you'll get it and then you'll know what to do as well. So this is just a little quote that I found and this really resonates with me and this is kind of something that I think about too when I first view you. So what are you showcasing? So that just goes back to, to what I was saying as well, just about what's on the outside before you've made that or you've made that initial connection and then that's what people are basing their first impression off you as well so purely just by what they're seeing so you know you need to think about what it is that you're showcasing so if you are going for a job interview or you know you are maybe on one of your pracs and you're going in to meet either your, your principal or your boss or the director of the company for the first time you need to think what am I showcasing to this person am I showing this person just by what I'm wearing or how I'm looking or how my body language is that I'm here and I'm willing to give this a good crack or you know you need to hire me 
just off what I'm showcasing right now. So first impressions. The moment a stranger sees you, their brain makes a thousand computations. So we've already, I've already talked about too some of the things that they're basing their first impression off you of. So also too, they will also be asking themselves questions about you. So they'll be looking, they'll be scanning, they'll be judging, but then they're also going to be thinking to themselves as well. Are you someone to approach or to avoid? Are you a friend or are you a foe? Do you have status and authority? Are you trustworthy, competent, likable, confident? Okay. They're going to be thinking that in seven seconds. So once again, you really got to nail that first impression and get that person on your side. So it does come back to, you know, what you're wearing, your body language, all of those things, because you want that person to feel really safe. Is number one, that you look quite safe, you know, and that you are friendly as well. And it even can come down to just a basic smile. You know, if you're smiling, that can make a major difference between someone who's going for the interview and someone who's smart. Now, I can be a little bit like this too in certain situations as well. And if you're someone who gets quite nervous whenever you're meeting someone new for the first time, you know, and this can be a really kind of nerve wracking event if you are going for a job interview as well. My, one of my big tips is to try using some relaxation techniques to calm your nerves. And I would be practicing those before I had the event on as well. And you just need to find what works for you. You know, some for some people it might be doing meditation or yoga or maybe just some deep breathing exercises or it could be even just going out and getting a nice cup of coffee and just kind of having a debrief of, sorry, a reflection about some of the things that could possibly happen throughout the interview as well. So controlling your nerves is something really important to try and conquer. And I know, you know, some people will get really nervous nervous in a certain situation and it just might be too hard to do but if you can control them to the best that you can that will certainly help throughout your interview as well so I would certainly be practicing those techniques um, before your interview or whoever it is that you're meeting for the first time okay so before I kind of get into the outfit component of things because that's what I really love as well. I'm going to take you just a little bit beyond to, uh, most important or just as important as an outfit as well. And most of you did go with body language uh, for your top answer there uh, out of those four options that you had. So your body language is really important. Um, I don't think I can stress that enough. So just making sure from the first time when you see you know, whoever it is you're going to meet for the first time to make that first impression that you have a really, really positive body language. And if you look too at the girl in the picture, like to me, that person, she doesn't look like she's got positive body language. Like if you're sitting like that in an interview or first time you're meeting someone, that kind of says that you don't want to be there at all. So I would even take that back to before you've even met that person, if you're sitting in an office or a foyer and you're waiting to be called in to go for an interview, I would make, or even before you've actually walked into the building, I would make sure that I have a positive body language before that. Because if you're sitting out in the foyer and there might be a receptionist there and, you know, and she's kind of watching you and seeing what you're doing, you know, as soon as you go in and you leave, they can go and say, oh, you know, that person, when they were here, they were really rude. They were on their phone. They came in really grumpy. They were really, yeah, they were really rude to me. You know, and they can relay that. You might have gone in and did a great first impression to the person you were meeting and the person that was interviewing you. But then the receptionist or whoever was um, working on the foyer can go, yep, don't hire that person. They were so rude when they came in. So you really need to make sure that when you are walking into a place that you've never been to before, that your body language is positive from the get-go. Okay, on to our next kind of think beyond your outfit tip is personal hygiene. So really, really important as well. So, you know, you need to make sure that either fresh shower the night before or the morning of, making sure too that you use deodorant, especially too if you are someone that gets nervous, you know, and you could sweat a little bit more than what you normally do as well. So making sure that you're wearing deodorant for the interview. Also too, even as simple as combing your hair, you know, at a 
that might only take a couple of seconds as well. And especially the guys too, you know, just check because I know you don't always think about your hair all the time and that's okay, but just checking, making sure that your hair is just well presented for that day. And once again, just making reference back to the photo. Like if you look at that girl's hair there, it's okay. It doesn't look like she's gone out of her way though to, done any, to do anything special for the day. And one kind of thing that I always have too is she's got a hair tie on her arm there as well. I'm always really conscious. Now, I know they're really good to kind of just have there and chuck, um, you know, up, chuck our hair up if we need them quickly. But I'm really conscious that sometimes it can just look a little bit tidy and a little bit unprofessional as well. So, yeah, I always try to keep my, if I've got a spare hair tie, either just in my pocket if I'm wearing something or even just in my handbag as well. But if, if it's something that you want to do all the time or you do do it all the time, I would just take it off before you do the interview and then make sure that you're not make sure, but then you can put it back when you go as well. But I would not to, when you're in the interview, I wouldn't decide if your hair's down, I wouldn't decide to put it up. That is not the time. If you go in with it down, don't start playing with your hair because that's not going to make a good first impression. That person that's meeting you is probably going to go, well, that girl's just going to play with her hair all the time if I hire her. Also too, then talking about the boys as well with hair. Um, also as well, if you uh, have a beard, if you've got a bit of a longer beard, just make sure that it is trimmed and brushed because you can keep your beard well manicured as well. If you are going for a job in an office and it might be a bit more of a corporate role as well, I would suggest to probably go in maybe clean shaven just because you don't know, you know what's going on and beards might be a no-go policy in their office as well. So I would suggest to probably go in clean shaven for the day. Okay, going on to our next step as well, which is oral hygiene. So once again, really important uh, you know, make sure that you brush your teeth and just have some mints in your bag or in the car as well. I also go for mints over than chewing gum because chewing gum, you know, obviously stays longer and you're chewing on it and that does not look good when you're standing there, you know, making that sound when you're meeting someone as well. So I always opt for a mint because that will dissolve quickly. And my last point I've got there too is to ask lots of questions. Obviously, if you're going for an interview, they're going to be asking questions about you. But if you kind of turn the situation around and ask questions, not so much about them, you know, where they live and what their dog's name is and things like that, but ask questions in general more about the company, um, you know, and it'll show a really great eagerness that you're willing to work here as well. And, you know, you might even do some research beforehand and then ask some questions like, oh, you know, I saw on the website that, you know, this is something that we do here. Can I just get a little bit more info about that policy? Or can I just double check this? Or I used to work here and we did something similar to that. Is that the same kind of thing? Because that'll show, you know, that you've researched and you know what you're talking about before you come into the interview. And whoever that you're talking to or sitting with, they're going to be really impressed that you've actually put in time to find out a little bit about the company before you've come along. So, yeah, so asking them questions about the company and about the way things work will definitely be good in your favour, work well in your favour. Okay. My next little just point I've got here is just about adjusting your attitude. Now, this is purely just going in, making sure that you're going in with a positive attitude. Because if you go in with the attitude of, don't even know why I'm here. I'm not going to get this job. Why even bother? You know, if you go in with an attitude like that, to me, you kind of don't deserve to get the job as well. So if you go in with a positive attitude, you know, yes, today's my day. I'm going to nail this first impression. I'm going to land this job. I'm going to walk out of here with a new role. You know, and it might not come to fruition and that's okay. At least you gave it a crack. But if you walk in with the attitude of, you know, yes, I can do this. I'm going to be successful. It will certainly work well rather than going in with a, I don't even know while I'm going to be here, which that will then trickle down into your body language as well. So, yes, so certainly adjust your attitude. Make sure you've got a positive attitude and you're ready to go. Okay. So I've talked about a little bit further than beyond the outfit. So now I'm going to start talking about outfits and kind of some things and what you can wear. And this is what I'm starting to do more so on a day-to-day -day basis as well. So I do my teaching three days a week and then this is what I'm really into as well. So if you do need any more info about this, um, there's also we've got lots of stuff on the USQ site on my landing page on what the teacher wears where we did a whole workshop of styling uh, we did a whole workshop, sorry, 
of styling sessions with guys and girls. So if you need some more info, head to the landing page and there's lots of videos that you can watch. Okay, so what to wear. So the key to nailing the perfect first impression outfit is to dress for your body shape. And I cannot stress this enough. You might have the most beautiful outfit on, ready for a first impression, but if it doesn't suit your body shape, it's actually not going to look that awesome at all. And this is also when I work with clients as well. So the first one that we have here, this is an inverted triangle. So with that being said, you can see that the triangle is shaped that way. So at the top there, that is representing that the shoulders are a little bit more broader than the hips. Now, if you are an inverted triangle, and this is you here, what we want to do is try and avoid bulking up this area. Because if this area is already a little bit more broader, we don't want to add a lot of volume and heaviness to that area there. Because what that's going to do is it's going to bulk up a lot more. And it can kind of make you look like a football player if you're a girl. And that's something that we do not want as well. So with that being said, it's your waist that's your narrowest part. So what you want to do is you want to belt that or wear shorter tops not tops that reveal necessarily, but if you're wearing something like a midi skirt that is a bit of a higher waist, joining it with a crop top, it'll sit a lot firmer and a lot nicer and it'll actually show off your waist. So coming down through, down to the legs here, this is where we can have a bit of a play and add lots of volume and things as well. So things like wide leg trousers, um, I was going to say a boyfriend jean though, but I wouldn't wear them to uh, an interview, but just to give you an idea. Wrap dresses as well or the midi skirts that I wear a lot of as well, those look really great on inverted triangles. Okay, so our next shape here, we've got the hourglass. Now, obviously, a lot of people think too, when, I, when we say hourglass, you think Marilyn Monroe, and that's right. So with your hourglass, what that means, and you can see by the diagram as well, is that the shoulders and the hips are in proportion, and it's the waist that's the tiniest part there. So with an hourglass, what we want to do, kind of like the inverted triangle, is we want to show off your waist as much as we can. Now, once again, I'm not saying, you know, you have to show it, actually show your waist. It's more just in the lines of making sure that you're belting things or wearing things that are a little bit of a higher waisted cut just so we can see the waistline. Give you a bit of defin definition there as well. One thing that's really great for hourglass shapes is wrap dresses. Wrap dresses are awesome because what they do is they kind of show off the top here. Most times they have a bit of a v-neck. They show off the top. They kind of skim the body. They wrap around the waist there and then they just fall down about knee length as well. So wrap dresses are really great for hourglass shapes. Unfortunately, though, we're about to go into winter, so we won't have a lot, but you know, definitely keep that mind coming into the summer months. And a wrap dress is certainly something that you can also wear to the workplace as well. So certainly keep that in mind. With your hourglass too, we want to open up that top area as much as we can. So by wearing V-necks or scoop necks or round necks, anywhere or anything that just opens up that area is great. Our next shape here that we have is the rectangle. Now, a rectangle, or most supermodels actually are rectangles because the beauty of a rectangle is that you can kind of trick the eye and you can turn or transform into another body shape as well. So with a rectangle, what we want to do is we want to actually give you a waist because you don't have one there, as you can see. So once again, by belting, um, also too, depending on how tall a rectangle is, like you might be able to pull off wearing longer tops and things. And you can also tuck them into to your pants or to your skirts once again so we can show off your waist. And then our last body shape that we have here is a pair. So if you look back to the inverted triangle and the pair, you can see that they are polar opposites. So with that being said, everything that I kind of said for the inverted triangle, what we want to do with the pair is we want to flip that. So with the pair, it's our legs that are a little bit wider so we don't want to add volume to that area there because that will make people look in an area where we don't want the attention to be drawn to. So if that being said, with a pair, just keep the bottom really simple. I'd go for really simple cuts in your pants. So I'd probably stick to a straight, sometimes a skinny leg as well. Um, I find that most of these body shapes can really rock kind of a skinny leg pant. Skinny legs are really great because they just give your legs a definition and show off 
what's ready there. So with a pair two, what you can do is you can wear a bit of a longer line top to hide that area too, if necessary. So with pairs, we want to draw all of the attention up to our shoulders. So we can add a little bit of volume up there. We can do a bit of a structured shoulder, wherever that be, um, like with the, in a blazer or a jacket with a bit of a shoulder pad. We can do lots of ruffles around that area, lots of lace and things like that beautiful but like I said too if you do need any more info about that if you go to our what the teacher wears landing page and USQ you'll get more info okay so just some little tips too just to bear in mind when you are finding your first impression outfit something that shows your individuality and personality okay you don't have to just rock in to that interview wearing a just going to say like a white button-up blouse and black pants okay you can because that's easy and that would certainly be appropriate pretty much for any workplace. But, you know, you can add a brooch to that if you want. If you've got a really quirky brooch at home, you could do that. Or if you are someone who wears statement necklaces a lot, you know, add a statement necklace to your outfit as well. Just make sure that whatever you're wearing kind of shows a little bit about who you are. Make sure too that you wear an outfit that you feel really comfortable in. Okay, but as you can see that I've said, no PJs or activewear. Keep that for at home. Okay, when I'm talking about comfortable, I'm talking about something that you've probably worn a couple of times before and you know what it feels like when you're wearing it. I would probably avoid buying something that you just put on for the first time. You can certainly buy something for you um, if you want for the interview, but I would make sure I would wear it at home and walk around in it first to see what it's like, especially if you buy a skirt, say, and, you know, it is a little bit flowy and it does catch the breeze a little bit, then you might wear tights underneath it for the day. So just make sure that you are comfortable in what you're wearing. There is nothing worse than seeing people kind of pulling at their shorts or their tops and, you know, adjusting it. And once again, you know, you want to show a good positive attitude and body language. And if you're sitting in the interview and you're niggling around with what you're wearing, it's not going to be a good first impression. Uh, I've said here just a wardrobe classic, okay? So you could easily wear, you know, an LBD, a little black dress, or like I said before, a white blouse and black pants. But then tie it back up with the first point that I've mentioned, something that shows your individuality and your personality as well. Now, I know because most of us are students, um, if your funds are low, it's okay. You know, you don't have to go out and buy a whole new outfit. You could also go to a secondhand store. If you've got some girlfriends or some boyfriends, go and raid their um, closets as well and see what you can find there. But if you do have an outfit that you think, yep, I'm certainly going to wear that for the day and just want to give it a little bit of a touch up, I would invest in an accessory. So, you know, it might be, like I said before, a really great step statement necklace. Like I'm wearing one today that I got for $10 from H&M. And I've had it for about two years now. And whenever I put it on, I just got a grey singlet on today and I've put that on and it's already just about cost me $10. So you've got something that you've had for a few years, you could certainly wear that. I would just do an accessory, but also too, it could be some really um, colorful fun bangles, or it might be a really great little belt that you've bought just to jazz it up as well. So if your funds are low, that's okay. You don't have to go out and invest in a whole new wardrobe. You can look at what you've already got and you can just add something little to spice it up a little bit. Okay. So Oh, we have a whole montage here <laughs> of some outfits. Now, all of these outfits I pretty much have worn teaching or when I've been doing my styling sessions as well. Now, I'm a really practical dresser, as you can see. So I always think practicality with my clothing. Will I be able to move in it? You know, if, some, if I need to run at the drop of the hat, will I be able to run in it? Um, can I wear it all day and be comfortable as well? So those are always things that I always keep in the back of my mind when I'm dressing. So as you can see in a few of these, I've got a midi skirt on. Now, the reason I just love these skirts so much is because they're really good. They show off the waist, which is what we want to do with a few body shapes. But also too, if you're someone like myself as well, I really don't like to show too much tummy. And they finish about to the knee length too. So then we can still see your legs underneath. So we can still see where you are. Really great too for moving around all day. You're not um, restricted at all if you're wearing something more a bit fitting like a pencil skirt. You've still got a lot of room to move, which is great. Um, also too, you know, and it can be something simple. You can even just wear some black pants and just by wearing a top. 
And then I've also got a statement necklace there with it as well, just for something different. I've got a look here at the top, which I've just got a, a white classic white button-up blouse and then just change it just with a different midi skirt, some with a bit of pattern. But then I've also teamed it back with some brogues. Now, these are just for something fun because you're not always wearing just like a black ballet flap. I like wearing the brogues because they're really comfy and they're just something different. They just give your outfit something different as well. This outfit down here, I've just kind of worn, once again, I've got a white button-up blouse and I've just put a dress over it. And then I also layered that once and I've put a necklace over the top of that as well. So, you know, you don't always have to keep your white button-up blouse just to that with black pants. There are so many ways that you can wear that too. And that dress that I'm wearing there is a Target dress and it's still current. And that one actually only cost me $49 as well. Really cute like, which you'd probably pay a little bit more if you bought it from that store. This dress is a really great investment. And then when it gets a bit warmer too, Oh, even though we're going through winter, but when it starts to get warmer, I don't have to wear the shirt with that. I can just take it off and wear it as a dress as is. So that's a really great dress there. And then when it does get cooler, I can team that back with some leggings and some boots as well because I'm all about buying clothes that are going to work with other things in your wardrobe. To me, there's no point in buying something and then having to go and get pieces to go with that thing. Whenever I'm shopping, I always pick something up and I think, what is this going to go with with what I've already got? Beautiful. All right, let's move on to the guys. So similar to the girls as well, you know, show something or wear something that shows your individuality and your personality as well. An outfit that you feel comfortable in. So I've switched this for the guys and I've said no board shorts, thongs or slogan tees. I would just avoid the slogan tees. Um, what was I watching? I was watching a show not so long ago and someone came in for an interview and he had a slogan tee on and it, it was actually, I was watching it on TV and it was so explicit that the TV actually had to blur it out. And I couldn't believe that that person was actually wearing that to an interview. And even the person that was interviewing said to him, do you think that you should be wearing that shirt to an interview? And it was quite funny. So I just think leave the slogan tees at home. If you are going to do a tee, depending on what type of job you're going for, I would just keep it to a really basic or one that's got a picture, but I would just leave all of the slogan tees and brand tees at home. And I've just got there for the guys, you can't go wrong with slacks, a button-up shirt and a tie or a bow tie. If you really are stuck with an outfit, that is just basic kind of dressing 101. With your slacks too, it can be a black or a navy. Um, your button-up shirt, you kind of once, uh, like what I was saying too with the girls, it can be just a white one. And then you can jazz it up with a tie or a bow tie in a bit of a colour or a pattern, just once again tying it back up to that first point. And it's got something that shows your individuality and your personality. Okay, and here we've got just some tips or some ideas for the guys and what to wear as well. So with your shoes, I would keep to a black or a tan. You know, those colours you are going to get so much wear out of and they will go with a lot of what's already in your wardrobe as well. So here we've got a guy who's got some black slacks. He's got more of the 7 eight length, which is really on trend right now. So just finishing just a little bit above your ankles and teaming it back with shoes and no socks. It is okay if you do that, as long as you feel comfortable in that as well, because that's very on trend right now. Don't wear it. Over here in this picture too, we've got some patterned tops and then teamed back with some floral ties. Bit of a pattern clash, which guys can do really, really well. And it doesn't matter if it's really out there. You know, once again, that comes back to showing a bit of your individuality and your personality too. So down here, we've got a bit of a navy jacket teamed back with a beige pant, which is something that you can do as well. It doesn't always have to be matchy-matchy. Same here, we've got a green jacket teamed back with a brown pant. And here we've got a blue jacket teamed back with a black pant as well. And this picture's got um, a really great example of layering for guys. So before how I had a picture of a blouse with a dress with a necklace, here we've got a shirt with a knit with a jacket over the top as well. Okay. And here's just some kind of generic tips um, if you're really, really stuck. I even did this the other day just to see what would come up when you actually do it. So if you simply go into Google and you type interview outfit, you get thousands of results. So if you are really, really stuck, that would be my first port of call is to go there. I 
I was looking for ages. I, I was finding some outfits. I thought, oh, I could really wear that. Um, the only thing I kind of found when I typed in interview outfit was a lot of it was American sites or American pictures and American clothes and brands that we might not necessarily have here. But that's okay. You know, you can at least use that and get an idea of something that you can wear here. Then for my second point there, I've just got create a Pinterest board. So if you're not on Pinterest, it's a really great site. It's pretty much just scrapbooking online. You can make a board for pretty much anything that you want. And you can also keep it private too if you don't want anyone else to see it. So what I would do is I would also sit on Pinterest. Once again, I did that. I typed an interview outfit and I got a lot of hits back for that as well. So if you go through and you find outfits that you really like, you can save them to that board. And then when it's time for the interview, you can log into that and then see what's there and get some inspiration that way too. And if there's an outfit that you really like, what I would even do is I would print it out and I would take it to the shops. And if it was an American one, say, I would print it out and take it to the shops and then find something similar because nine times out of 10, you'll find something really similar. And I would even go, if I was going into the shop, a shop that I wanted to go to, I'd go to the attendant and say, hey, look, I really like this outfit. Do you have something similar in the shop that matches this? And it's also, it's just going to save you a lot of time rather than you going and searching for yourself because the person that works there knows the product that's in their store. So yeah, I'll go, I really like this outfit. Can you please show me where I can get something like this from? The last point I've got there, it's kind of like a little bit of online stalking, which I know some of us may have been guilty of. I'll put my hand up. So looking at the company's online profiles. So, you know, going through their social media channels or going to their website, have a look, you know, do they put pictures up of what they do on um, staff days or social days, uh, things like that? Or if they're going out and doing a community event, do they put pictures up of what they're wearing? So that's a really good idea. Um, a really good way to get an idea of what people are wearing that already work there as well. But if you've got a friend too that works there and say, hey, you know, what do you think would be acceptable to wear? But yeah, certainly I'd get online, get on their social media channels, get onto their website, have a look, see what they're wearing. They, you might not even know if it's a really, really big company. They might actually have a dress policy up on the website for everyone to refer to that works there. So you might even actually find that and then you'll know what to wear straight away. So I've got this point here and just says, keep in mind the job that you are there for to give you a direction to dress. So yes, we want to make a great first impression. Yes, we want to nail our outfit and our body language and our attitude and all of those things, but just also keep in mind to kind of dress for the job that you are going for. So if you were going for a very corporate role, um, you know, might be an inner city job. Straight away, that kind of says all points po point to um, a corporate outfit. You know, for girls, it would be maybe a full, uh, could be a full suit or a full corporate dress with heels. So guys, probably a suit um, with, a jack with a blazer and a tie button up shirt as well. But if you are going for maybe a part time or a casual job at a dog groomers, you know, I wouldn't be wearing a suit to that but keeping that in mind I would probably go for more of a smart casual outfit too good probably to wear slacks and a tee if you're a guy or if you were a girl um, you could wear a few of the things that I had just on the picture before you might do a button-up blouse just with a really cute midi skirt as well so yes you need to dress to impress but just keep in mind where you're going for your job interview for and also keeping in mind too if you are going to go for this job interview and you're going to go really out there and over the top for the interview, but you never ever plan on dressing like that again while you're working there, you need to think about what kind of impression is that giving your boss? You know, you've made this lots of great effort, brushed your hair, put some makeup on, put some lippy on, and then you come to the, you come the next day and you're wearing your pajamas. So what do you think that person that's just hired you, what do you think they would be thinking? So you really need to think too, if you are not planning on following through all of the time, and I'm not saying, you know, you have to dress up all of the time to work, but I'm just saying, just keep this in mind, you know, really think what would I be wearing on a day to day basis as well? If I do, or if I am successful in the interview, because I've made such a good first impression, they've given me the job. So just keep that in mind as well. 
And even too, when you're in the interview, ask things, you know, ask them. And this goes back to asking them questions about the company as well, which is really important. Just simply ask them, do you have a company dress policy? Yes, great. Awesome. I'd love to hear it. Do you have things like casual Fridays, which most workplaces kind of in the city and things do, you know? And if they say yes, then ask them, oh, what would be appropriate to wear? Most places that do do a casual Fridays, you can get away with a darker pair of jeans. So yeah, I would just ask them. There is no harm in asking. And there's also no such thing as a silly question. And this is actually something that I say to any prac student that works with me as well, because it is so much more important to ask the question than to rather get it wrong and really wrong. Yeah, always make sure that you ask. Beautiful. Here's just another little quote that I found as well. And this one is just dress how you want to be addressed. Really, really important to, this is something that I pretty much do every day when, if I'm having a teaching day. If I'm standing up in front of a classroom of about 25 students and I was wearing my pyjamas, what do you think they would be thinking of me? And how do you think that would actually treat me as well if I was wearing pyjamas when I was teaching? Okay, not very well. I probably wouldn't earn their respect because they're going, well, this lady can't even get out of her pyjamas to teach us today. So why are we going to listen to her? She hasn't shown us any respect, so we're not going to show her any respect either. So always make sure that you dress how you want to be addressed. So, you know, if you are putting in that effort, it's going to reflect and then people are going to give that effort back to you as well. Good choices. Oh, the morning of. The morning of person, well, I'll give you a clue. If you do it the day before or a couple of days before, you'll actually save yourself a lot of stress of in that morning or of that morning for when you're going for your job interview. Thanks for that, everyone. So, yeah, so I, that's something that I do too. I do a few days in advance. Um, here's one big tip too, and this is what I tell my clients when I go styling with them. If you are someone who finds it really hard to dress in the morning. So if you are currently working for somewhere they don't have a dress code policy and you just kind of have to put an outfit together every day and that can be really stressful and that can take a lot of time. Sometimes that can take up to 20 minutes each morning deciding on what you're going to wear for that day. My biggest tip is to plan your outfits the week before. So if I am working, if well, back when I was working full time, when I was working Monday to Friday, I would plan all of my outfits on the Sunday and I'm talking full outfit. I'm talking the, the shoes, the top, the dress or the skirt or the necklace, whatever it is. I would plan that whole outfit. So if you look that it takes you about anywhere between 10 to 20 minutes in the morning. If you're doing that every day, there's nearly an hour that you're wasting in the mornings, you know, and then that leads to a lot of stress and angst, which it doesn't have to. And that's time that you can save. It could lead to sleeping in a little bit longer because you've already got that planned. So I would certainly be making sure that I am planning my outfit for the day well in advance. It doesn't have to be weeks in advance. It, can't, it might even be like the day before, but I would certainly make sure that I've done it before I'm about to get out the door. But you should already have that on there. So I would probably make sure you just do it well before the morning. Okay. So, yeah, so some tips for the day. Plan your outfit in advance. Don't leave it until the morning of. Really important, don't be late because of what kind of impression did that give the person that you were going to meet. If you were late, they probably won't hire you. I know I wouldn't. If you were coming to me for a job interview and you were late, I wouldn't hire you. I probably, I would probably actually say I'm not going to go ahead with the interview because if you couldn't even make it for the interview time, who says you're going to make it to work on time as well? Really important one, the last one, turn your phone on to silent. I would even too turn it on to silent rather than vibrate just for that interview. It's probably going to be over like over 10 minutes and I'm sure you haven't missed anything. If you though, however, did have maybe a medical emergency in your family, I would say to the person that you're going to the interview with, excuse me, sorry, you know, we've got a medical emergency in my family at the moment. I've got a family member who's in hospital. It, you know, it's not looking good. I really just need to have my phone on me just, just in case, you know, and just be upfront with them. Let them know because they will appreciate your honesty so much more than your phone ringing. And then you go, oh, I've got to take this right away because they'll go, what was that about? So, yeah, if you do have something like that, just let them know. Or, you know, you might have um, 
a child in daycare and they're not very well, just let them know. Beautiful. And here is just another kind of quote to leave you with as well. So this quote is, be the type of person that you want to meet. Okay, and that's what I'm going to leave you with tonight as well. So I really want you to think about that. So if you are wanting to meet someone, got great body language, great personal hygiene, all of those things, then you really need to be that person yourself. And it's also putting out and, you know, and, and believing in what you're doing and making sure your attitude is right and adjusting that as well and being that type of person that you would want to meet. Because if you are looking in the mirror and you're going, you know, I would not want to meet me right now, then how's that going to go for your job interview and making that a first impression and making it for the right reason as well. So that's what I'm going to leave for you with tonight, just that last quote there, be the type of person that you want to meet. Just have a think about that and think, you know, oh, well, you know, last interview I went for, I didn't shake that person's hand or I didn't actually kind of put effort in and, and brush my hair that day. You know, would I want to meet someone who they didn't put much effort in and brush their hair and maybe didn't brush their teeth as well? So, yeah, so just leave that. So be the type of person that you want to meet. Okay. So. I've done a lot of talking for tonight. Um, so we're going to throw it over to Andrea for some questions now, if you guys have any questions. Yes, excellent. So we've had a couple come through while we've been in the session. Um, so Alex, we've had an anonymous question. So what are some of the biggest first impression outfit mistakes that you tend to see people make? Okay. Um, first impression outfits, kind of mistake ones that I've seen. Um, this is a motto of mine too, which I've mentioned on the USQ on my landing page. This is kind of something just to stick by, and I have seen this, so this is what I'll say it. If you can see up it, down it, or through it, don't do it. So I have seen things, you know, and ladies, if their tops have been really low cut and revealing, if you're sitting down in an interview, you know, you're just sitting there and at eye level, you're just showing a little bit too much cleavage. With that being said too, really short skirts and sometimes when we do wear really short skirts what happens is because they're so short and if they actually lift up off our legs we can actually see down them as well and also if it's see-through um if you were wearing something that's see-through that's fine i would just make sure that i'm wearing a cami or something underneath it just so it's not showing through to my skin and revealing too much as well so yeah, so that's some of the things I've seen, just tops that are really way too revealing and shirts, oh sorry, skirts that are really, really short. So I would always make sure I just cover it up a little bit up the top and always just kind of aim to the knee length and you should pretty much are safe if you always go for the knee. Excellent. Um, we've also had a question come through. So I'm going to be working on a sports day on my prac placement. How can I dress professionally for that type of setting? Like what's appropriate for sports at school? That is a bit of a tricky one. Um, with sports for school, you can certainly still wear your active wear, but I would avoid tights. Now, the reason I would just avoid tights is because they can be a little bit revealing and depending on who's there on the day. Like if, um, if you're at a high school, say, and you've got older boys around there, if you're wearing tights and they are a little bit revealing, you know, probably not a good look. So what I would do, and this is what I do on my sports days, is I opt for more of kind of a relaxed cargo pant because they're still a little bit firm fitting but more relaxed though, so I can still run around and actually join in with the sports day as well. And I would just wear just a basic T-shirt and that could even be a striped T-shirt or um, there's a brand as well which a lot of us would know, an activewear brand. I just wore one of her, um, that label's t-shirts as well for the day. So I would just keep it to a t-shirt, making sure too that the t-shirt is a little bit longer. So if you are going to lift your arms up, um, if you were joining in with the sports for the day, throwing if you're throwing a ball or something, if you were doing ball games, making sure that your shirt wasn't lifting up and revealing your tummy as well. So what I would actually do, if you've already got the outfit, try it on at home and just run around your bedroom probably look like a crazy person, but that's okay. You know, you'll know it'll pass the test as well. And even if you do find a pair of pants, bend over in them and then see what they're like when you bend over and see if your behind maybe sticks out a little bit and then you go, okay, those pants aren't for me. And if you don't have an outfit yet, then I would 
if you are going to buy one, I would do all of those things in the change room. So you know that when you get out to sports day, you have passed the test. Awesome. So we do have a question that's just come through from Amy. Um, so Amy says, midi skirts with pleats don't really suit me. So I often wear mid-length pencil skirts instead. I really love them. However, sometimes they aren't the best around the little ones that I teach with. What are some other options? Ooh, other options then. Um, I, well, I myself, I don't have a lot of mine with, with pleats. A lot of the ones I've got are plain ones. Um, so yeah, I would try and just opt for ones that don't have, um, pleats on them and just keep it a bit plain. There are some great skirts too at Target at the moment, which actually are more of a pencil style, but they do have a lot of stretch in them. Um, I actually wore one yesterday that I put up on my Instagram account just from Target and I wear that when I'm teaching the preps because it's got so much stretch in them. So if you are sticking to your pencil skirts, just opt for ones that have heaps of stretch in them. Beautiful. Um, we have another question. Do you have to wear heels to a job interview? I always feel much more comfortable in flats, but I don't want to look unprofessional. Oh, really good question. Once again, I would kind of relate that back to where you're going for your job interview for. And I, there's actually at the moment too, there's great midi heels that are out. So a midi heel is kind of in between between a flat and a heel but you can get some that only have like a three centimetre up to a five centimetre height on them as well. So if but I don't think wearing flats is a bad thing at all, I would just make sure it's put together with the whole look as well. So flats to a job interview are fine. Just making sure that they're not scuffed or dirty too, that they're nice and polished and clean. Excellent. Um, and last question, um, what are some of your favourite or recommended stores for sort of budget-friendly wardrobe staples? I don't want to spend a lot of money, um, but I want things that are going to last in my wardrobe. Okay. Um, my first one is Target. I, when I was on PRAC, that was where I got pretty much all of my outfits from, just for the quality too. And I still have some pieces. So what am I, this is my sixth year of teaching. I still have pieces that I bought when I was at USQ studying that I still wear to this day. Another thing that I also did as well, because I was working casually when I was at uni, um, I really loved Veronica Main and Q, but obviously could not afford the prices on a uni budget. So what I would actually do was wait till they had their end of season sales. So we're about to go into our next kind of end of season sale with the um, end of the financial year coming up. And you'll find that you can get some really great um, pieces that are 50 sometimes 75 percent off there's absolutely nothing wrong with them they just want to get rid of them just before the end of the financial year so that's what I would always do is I would kind of save a little bit for that I once again I still have some pieces from Veronica Main and Q that I bought on my prax that I still have to this day because the quality of them and they're Australian made is really really good so yeah so I'm Target um, is really good for kind of those everyday pieces that you can wear. And then, yeah, I would wait for Veronica Main and Q to go on their end of season sales, which they're about to pretty much, what are we, pretty much within the next couple of weeks. And then I would also get some staples from there as well. Excellent. Do you have any suggestions for the guys, Alex? Because I know we do have a few male viewers tonight as well. Um, where to get pieces from for their wardrobe? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, with the guys, uh, Target, really good menswear section as well. Roger David um, has some really great pieces and a lot of the images that were used there for the guys were from Roger David. Roger David's really good too because they're starting to branch out and they're in a lot more locations than what they used to be. And they've also got, um, oh, I was about to say sister store, but they've got a brother store called RDX, which has got some really great things too. They're really similar in the styles that they stock. And they have been having 40% off store-wide for the last couple of months, I swear. I was just at um, a Westfield on Monday and I walked past Roger David and they just had 40% off everything. So they're also too about to come into their end of financial year sales as well. So I would certainly be hitting up Roger David and grabbing a suit. And they, if you don't have a suit, I would head there because they have so many suits in different colours and they tailor make them for you. So you can actually walk out of there with a tailor made suit just for you for under $200. And if you are going to do that, I would opt first for a black or a navy because that's those are colors that you will be able to wear forever. And then you can just um, 
intertwine with them and just do different tops and different ties and things and still wear the same pants for years and years and years. No one would ever know. Excellent. So that is the end of all of our questions. So thank you very much to everyone who sent those through. We hope those answers were very helpful. Um, I know Alex mentioned a couple of times during the presentation um, her USQ and what the teacher wears landing page. So the URL for that is social.usq.edu.au forward slash WTTW. So we'll send that one out through um, the chat function as well. So that's where you'll find a great range of styling videos that we've done with Alex, um, a little bit of a change room check video as well. So you can test out some of those new pieces that you're trying on to make sure that they are practical and comfortable for your interviews. Um, and also some great grads outfit styling videos that we've just done as well.